Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today, A Better Way to Serve and Manage Your Members. This presentation is created specifically for tribal government leaders. Today, our presentation will be given by experts in technology with hands-on experience partnering with tribal nations, Brian Schmidt from Arctic IT and Don Leonetti from Microsoft. Before we begin, we'd like to remind you there are a few informational flyers in the handout section for you to download and share as reference materials. As always, if you have a question, please feel free to submit at any time via the questions box so we can address them at the end of the presentation. So with that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Brian. Thank you, Joanne. Appreciate the introduction and uh, welcome everyone. I'm glad you're able to uh, join this webinar and uh, learn a little bit more about uh, how we can uh, use some uh, technology and software uh, to help you manage your tribal government uh, and operations. Uh, so what we want to do is dive right in uh, and walk through the, the steps of what we want to do. Uh, a little bit about myself, introduction to Arctic IT. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, the uh, IT modernization uh, and how that plays into uh, what we're trying to accomplish. We'll talk a little bit about the solutions that are available between uh, Microsoft and Arctic IT uh, that we make available for tribal governments. And then we'll do a, a quick walkthrough on uh, uh, the solutions themselves, uh, give you an overview of how these products work together uh, to help you uh, in your operations. And then we'll save some time at the end for a Q&A uh, so mm -hmm. that if, if you type those questions and paste that into the, the uh, chat, uh, we will, Joanne will go ahead and ask your question for you. So, so what I wanted to do is, is briefly introduce Arctic IT and our partnership uh, with Microsoft. Uh, Arctic IT has deep roots in the, the Microsoft or in the tribal government space, uh, working with uh, over 72 tribes uh, in the last 15 years, uh, delivering services from both financial, uh, tribal for financial management, uh, customer relationship, tribal member management uh, for both of the tribal government as well as casinos. Uh, Arctic IT is 100% uh, native owned. Doyan Limited is our parent company. Uh, mm -hmm. And we are a Microsoft Gold partner, which means that essentially 1% of all the partners uh, that work with Microsoft uh, achieve this status, uh, which requires some pretty significant uh, uh, criteria to provide and maintain that as a, as a certified gold partner with Microsoft. So we work, we work hard and very closely with Microsoft. Uh, we hire some uh, industry experts, uh, which is the MVP, so most valuable professionals, uh, and Microsoft certified trainers. Uh, so we actually have staff uh, that are very highly experienced and certified in all the Microsoft uh, technology stack items uh, so that we can bring you those <clears throat> those capabilities uh, and, and make sure that we're uh, making the most value out of the, your investment. Uh, we are an 8A certified uh, organization, Alaska Native Owned Corporation. Uh, and as I mentioned, we, you know, we do have a lot of expertise in the tribal government space. So and, and Microsoft, obviously, just a solid foundation of a platform stack and components that all just work together to bring that dependability and productivity uh, and, and uh, ease of use for you to, to make sure that you're managing all your operations on a day to day basis, all integrated together and, and streamline uh, the communication and uh, and all aspects of the tribal government operations. So just a quick quote from one of our clients, George Wood at uh, Mohegan Tribe. Uh, we've got a really great partnership uh, uh, with them and we really uh, feel like uh, <clears throat> we can have that conversation to make sure that when they ask us uh, for a uh, technology recommendation solution, uh, that they're uh, we're, we're fitting their need and listening to their needs and, and fulfilling their uh, uh, strategy. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the IT modernization and how uh, the, the changes that are happening in the market uh, and how we can, you can utilize that to, to help manage your, your membership and your tribal government. So one of the challenges or many of the challenges that tribes face today uh, is that, you know, you have siloed systems. You might have a, an enrollment system in one department. You might have an education system in another department. You have your financials and you have different point solutions for each of the different departments and they don't necessarily work together. So what happens is, is that uh, you have duplicated data and sometimes if the enrollment data uh, gets updated, you're manually uh, exporting that data and replicating it to the other departments. 
uh, which causes time and sometimes uh, the, the data gets out of sync uh, in, in those scenarios. So it, it, it creates issues on the reporting side, plus you're also challenging some of the security uh, because you've got very sensitive data that you might be exchanging either through email or through spreadsheets or other mechanisms. Uh, so you're, you're potentially compromising the security of that highly sensitive and highly private data uh, that, you, that you maintain for your tribal members. So one of the things that we've been partnering very closely with Microsoft uh, is to take a hard look at a lot of those legacy systems, those point solutions that are in individual departments. And we consider those to be legacy business applications. And they're typically on premise running on one or two computers inside your office and saying, okay, what can we do to uh, migrate those legacy systems into cloud hosted environments? And Microsoft is a catalyst, catalyst that allows us to, to make a, bring some of that uh, capabilities forward to you and make it available to you. Uh, we want to make sure that you you know you have resiliency with disaster recovery, data backup, uh, managing data redundancy uh, so that if something does happen, you aren't losing information. Uh, you've got backups of that information uh, in, in a proper and current way so you aren't losing uh, information. Plus the scenarios of, you know, if I need to have access uh, to that data when I'm remote, when I'm not in the office, I usually have to go through a, a very complex remote access mechanism to get access to the data where, you know, in this COVID environment, uh, that remote workforce is becoming more and more important. Uh, and that's where we're seeing this trend in, in tribes moving to cloud hosting uh, to enable your staff to be able to work remote uh, and provide that business continuity uh, through the, the challenging times that we're in. Uh, so we've seen some significant uh, improvement scenarios uh, for uh, tribes and tribal government uh, to, take a, to take advantage and leverage uh, the, the tools and, and platforms that Microsoft and Arctic IT uh, can bring to bear uh, for you to help your operations. And with that, I will hand this over to uh, Don Leonetti, uh, Account Director at Microsoft, uh, who can introduce you to one of the platform components uh, that we rely on very heavily to bring, uh, to perform those uh, legacy uh, migrations. Don? Thank, thank you, Brian, and, uh, and uh, good, good morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you're at in the, in the United States. And uh, Many of you may know me. I've been working with the tribal market for 15 years and uh, 14 and almost 15 of those years, I've partnered uh, very, very closely with Arctic IT. Um, they're a great um, organization. Uh, I would say um, my top partner for tribal customers. They just get and understand the business of a tribe, what the challenges are that tribes face, uh, from the government perspective, healthcare, uh, the business side of a tribe that in many cases is the casino operation. Um, and when their professionals engage with your teams, they're, um, again, they're talking at, they're talking your language. Whereas many other partners that do other work for commercial businesses or even, you know, state and local government, they don't have the depth of, of knowledge of what the unique needs of a tribe are. So, um, that's just my quick endorsement for uh, working with Arctic IT. And I've watched them grow from a, a 20 person organization to well over a hundred IT professionals today. So um, can't, can't recommend them enough. So the slide that you see here um, talks a little bit about the Microsoft Dynamics 365 platform. It's an integrated cloud platform that can unify uh, CRM and ERP capabilities and break down those data silos that uh, Brian was talking about where you might have um, different departments having different views of a tribal member. Uh, this will give you one holistic approach to uh, uh, providing citizen services to, to your constituents. Uh, this platform will also help you realize digital transformation. Where you can apply um, and, and the applications for this product, you know, no, noted there are sales, marketing, and customer service, finance and supply chain management, enterprise, retail, and e-commerce. But when I peel back the layers of the onion a little and we, we apply that to a tribal business, it can be anything from a caseworker that is working with a housing, the housing department and they need to track 
interacts with a tribal member or their family, or it could be a caseworker doing child welfare. I know one of our tribes uses this technology with field workers. They go out with a tablet in the field and they can have forms created on the tablet where they take notes down during the, the interview of the family and they can take pictures with that tablet. And the second they get back online, everything gets loaded up and, and, a, and a, 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 a workflow gets created that, um, uh, then gets acted upon by the appropriate departments within the tribe. So it's just a very powerful platform that takes all that paper-based process and throws it out the window and you get to more of a digital transformative process. And it uses a common data model. And of course, with Microsoft, security is always at the forefront and we have best-in-class cloud security. So with, um, with Dynamics 365, you also have the ability to integrate with our Power Platform. And the Power Platform is a combination of products, including our Power BI uh, product, which is a, a way to unify data from many sources to create interactive, immersive dashboards and reports that can then provide actionable insights to drive business results. So think of it as a, a dashboard tool where you come in in the morning and open your dashboard and you see the relevant data that's germane to your role and what you're doing for your constituents. The second piece of the Power Platform is Power Automate, which includes powerful workflow automation directly in your apps with a no-code approach that connects to hundreds of popular apps and services. And finally, the Power Apps lets you build apps within hours, not months. That, and those apps can easily connect to data. They use Excel-like expressions to add logic and run on the web, iOS devices, Android, as well as, of course, PCs. And this is my last slide. Um, again, the Dynamics 365 is one platform for security and governance. We Ooh. utilize the Azure Cloud Platform on the back end with Security First certified and tested, which in includes HIPAA and CGIS compliance, always giving you the latest and greatest technology, unlimited amounts of storage and computing. And the beauty is you only pay for what you need. And uh, that's the beauty of Azure and our cloud platform. With regard to the integration platform, we're using a common data service, which I mentioned on the last slide, Microsoft Power Platform, fully featured APIs and integration tools, and virtual entity facilitates customization uh, efforts. And finally, on the collaboration side, here's where your Office 365 document or app document allows you to collaborate in real time, sharing calendars, advance email functionality with Outlook and Exchange, and connecting with your team anywhere, anytime on any device with our Teams platform. I'll turn it back over to Brian and he's gonna get a little more deep uh, into how they're doing this for, I believe, enrollment in, 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 the, in, the, in the use case, and, uh, how they've deployed this across many tribes across the country. So back to you, Brian, and thank yep. you very much for your time today. Yep, thank you, Don. Appreciate that overview of Dynamics 365. So what I wanna do now is then now take a, a next step and to show you an example of how uh, we've used a Dynamics 365 platform, that power platform, and the different components that are available within that suite of, of fully integrated uh, uh, solutions to allow us to build out a, a tribal platform suite that's designed for tribal governments to help you manage your membership data. Uh, so this graphic is, is a brief introduction uh, into that notion of having that member master database. It's common for tribes to essentially work with a, a, a core uh, enrollment solution that manages who is that member, uh, what's their eligibility for membership and benefits and, and uh, uh, services uh, that the tribe provides. Uh, that becomes what we call a tribal member master database. And that's where tribal platform becomes a center of all the different solutions that can be available that are fully integrated together uh, to provide co a common uh, repository for that member data uh, and all the services that are being uh, provided to that individual or their family. Uh, so we use those relationships and, and the common data service and all those pieces that Don just talked about in, in the tribal or in the, the Dynamics 365 world uh, to bring this capability uh, to your operations. Uh, so we, we, in many cases, we have cross-department policies that aren't supported because each of their system, current systems are siloed, uh, but they want to be able to integrate and work together. Uh, so that's where you know we look at the solution and the policies that you might have in place for either eligibility or program participation 
uh, and, we, and applications for different services, and we streamline that process through a, a, a common data uh, service interface through either through the portal, uh, which allows them to access their, their own data remotely, or from the tribal member's uh, standpoint, uh, when that member comes into the office to actually request services. And of course, because uh, the Dynamics 365 platform is a security, uh, very secure product, we always approach this data uh, from a security standpoint and a tribal sovereignty. Uh, one aspect that, that it has been a, uh, an issue in the past, but is no longer an issue, or we're, we're working through that with tribes, an understanding on how the cloud hosted data is encrypted and holds a security key that only your tribe owns. So it isn't like it's it's out in a an ambiguous area. No, the data is in a cloud environment which is owned by you. You have control and can say who accesses it, and they can only access it when you decide to give them the key uh, to be able to log in. So that's how we worked with many different tribes across the United States uh, to actually migrate from their on-premise systems to cloud hosting uh, and work through their data, data sovereignty uh, questions and, and rules uh, that are that are in place. And of course, because these features come along with Dynamics 65, the business rules, workflows, integration to office, and all those things just come along with that. Then we, we just get to take advantage of that and provide that as a great suite of, of services that are available to you. So I want to quickly touch, uh, before we get into the demonstration, uh, touch on the tribal platforms enrollment. Uh, again, this is designed as a cloud-hosted application <clears throat> that allows you to manage the, you know, for your enrollment team, to manage who are members, what is the eligibility criteria, uh, manage the, the, the membership applications. Uh, so when they want to join the tribe or a new baby is born, uh, then you can actually move that uh, application through the process defined by you meeting your criteria uh, so that you can man manage that in one common location uh, for everyone, which is, which is a great need uh, and a great, uh, which streamlines uh, the, the, the interaction that happens between you and the tribal member. Uh, plus we have the ability to uh, capture the ancestry. So it doesn't have to be just who are the members, but we can also capture uh, those individuals that may be a spouse uh, of, of one of the tribal members, so you can, but they may be non-members. So you can actually capture all that information to be able to create that ancestry using a family tree report, which is fairly common. Plus we have software built into this uh, enrollment application that allows you to interface with your ID card printer. Uh, so you can still have the data stored in this cloud hosted environment and connect to your local printer uh, and to be able to print out those ID cards. So you can still manage uh, that information uh, for your members and and, and be able to, uh, to to satisfy those requests uh, for either reprinting or issuing new new ID cards. Uh, and then the distribution payments in, in uh, depending on the tribe, they have different names. Uh, for either the per capita general welfare or different programs uh, for distributing, you know, uh, enterprise funds for the, the tribal members. Uh, but we have an integrated solution that integrates to, uh, that also integrates to the finance system to be able to process those transactions efficiently uh, and be able to provide that as a streamlined way to uh, simply, you know, create that distribution the amounts and then uh, send that out to the individual members to get that in, you know, the assistance in their hands as quickly as possible. Now with something new you may not have heard of before, we've also built this, built this solution called Tribal Platforms Family Wellness. This is essentially a family uh, services and child case management uh, solution that not only provides case management for an individual, but also provides the capability to, brought, to uh, introduce case management at the family level and involving everyone in the family uh, in certain scenarios so that you can have that overview of all the different programs that are available, either from a financial standpoint or from an assistance uh, or a counseling standpoint and be able to integrate and, and uh, capture all the activities that are being tracked and created around that, <clears throat> around that case and that family uh, so you can provide the information that is needed, uh, both when you're in the office or out in the field, providing assessments uh, for those individual families to assess progress and, and working through the incidents and so forth that they have, may have run into in the past. So there's some really great capability, and we'll touch on some of these features 
uh, in this family wellness solution, because this is something new uh, that is, a, again, integrated to your enrollment data, but yet it uh, it really extends a ability for your team to, to track your program participation and, and uh, how you're providing services to your members. And obviously we use what we call PII security, personal identifiable information. We very carefully manage the security of that data uh, at a level so that the only those people in your different departments, you can decide who can have at least read only access to certain data or can do read write operations. So we, we very carefully control uh, that visibility of data so that you, you apply principles of least access or least permissions so that only uh, people that should have access to data or records uh, are permitted to see that. So we, we take privacy seriously and we implement that very carefully inside the solution uh, staff. And then of course, something else that's new uh, now this year uh, is what's called the tribal platform portal. This is all built on top of the Dynamics 365 and the Power Portal, Power Apps Portal uh, capability. Uh, and this is all integrated together. So you see the enrollment, the family wellness, uh, the portal extends that capability to your tribal members to be able to log in securely uh, through uh, through multiple mechanisms that you, that you define uh, and then extend the ability to update their own record, uh, apply for services, see status, uh, of the different, uh, uh, either the service requests or the applications that they have submitted, or just request, uh, make general requests uh, for your staff to be able to review and, and uh, process. Uh, so this is a great way, especially now during COVID, when in some cases tribal governments have closed offices um, to limit the exposure or made access by appointment only. This is a mechanism for not only your members that uh, don't wanna come into the office, they can still request services, or maybe they're located in another area, another geographic region, and they wanna be able to engage with a tribe. Now you can extend that capability to them uh, in a 24 by seven access in a very secured way. Uh, so that's, that's some great capabilities uh, that are now available to you that didn't exist uh, even, even upwards of a year or two ago. All right, so let's switch gears uh, and dive in uh, to uh, a demonstration of the overall solution. Uh, I will pull this up and, okay, so this is the solution and you can see that I'm right now running in what's called a browser. Uh, this can be any of the browsers that you support uh, within your tribal government operations. Uh, and this, you can see that as I take this uh, browser page uh, and resize it, let's say I'm bringing this down to a, a phone size, the, the screen actually adapts to uh, the size of the screen. All, all the data is still there. I can just scroll up and down to have access to that information. So whether I'm uh, using this browser on a tablet in that type of uh, scenario, or I've got a full desktop or a mobile device, I can still get access to all that data and the application just automatically uh, adjusts to the screen size uh, and, and uh, the, what you're using. So that's a really great capability that we don't essentially have to go build. That's built into the Power Platform and the Dynamics 365 product. Uh, so that's that's some great capabilities. And of course, with uh, with these dashboards, these are great mechanisms for your uh, for your staff, whether they're caseworkers, as an example, or uh, or your management team, to assess what are the what are the things that are uh, going on. What are my actions that I need to take? Uh, so I can see that my overall list of cases, who owns them, uh, what is their status, whether they're new or approved, what are the types of cases that are that are in process, uh, and then maybe use this as a way to say, I need a list of all my current active cases, uh, either that are assigned to me or by anybody else on the team. So I may need to drill in and take action with some of those. Uh, so that's some really great capabilities. Uh, to be able to uh, to support and, and provide your family and child services. I'm, in this demonstration, I'm not gonna go into the enrollment functionality. We'll touch a little bit about how uh, how the, uh, the, the contact or that member is shared between uh, the two applications. So this list is that list of contacts or members or non-members, but there are people uh, that you want to be able to manage inside the system. So literally with a query, members of the tribe all 
I can run that query, and this is a live update of the, the made up data that we have in this system uh, to show me the list of all the tribal members. So it shows right now that there's 42 uh, members in the system, but then I can quickly switch, uh, switch that view to say, I wanna see everybody in this system and see that, okay, there's a non-member, so the, obviously Mary is a, is a spouse to somebody that is a member, uh, and, and you can see their age, you can see all their primary information. So this is, uh, this is a really great way uh, to look at all the information that's in the system uh, and be able to, in a live setting, perform a query and ask questions. I can do searching. So I'm just gonna do a, a quick search for Mary uh, and it comes up with her record. Um, in this case, I can do parks. I can do, uh, I can do multiple different uh, queries. And you see, as I type those searches, I, it'll do wildcards. So let's say I'm gonna try and find Joan right here. Uh, I can do a little wildcard here <clears throat> and it finds her tribal ID. So this is a great way. Maybe she doesn't know her whole number, but even a portion of it. Uh, this is a, a way for you to find the information you need uh, to be able to do your job. Uh, so that's it's really, really core information. And again, that we don't have to provide or build out, this comes with the platform. And of course, uh, one aspect of this is you can have those same uh, charts and, and views uh, that were available on the dashboard. You can add those to this contact list. And you'll notice that I'm showing everybody right now, but if I only wanna see the senior members, I can click on this bar and it's an interactive way to uh, filter these results by, so it only shows those 26 or no, I only wanna see these 28 uh, adult members and here they all are. This is a great way to have interactive uh, charting and querying capability that is, is just really highly extendable, highly configurable uh, to, to manage, your, uh, manage your operations. All right, so I'm gonna go uh, click on this contact here again. So I'm gonna pick on Alicia and I'll show you now this is a view of the information that is shared. So this record is more of her core content or her core demographic information, uh, what, uh, what her name, uh, maybe the last four digits are social uh, because I'm not permitted to see her full social security number. That's another element of uh, the security in the system. Uh, so you can see this by this little lock, that's what's called field level security. So I can protect the information and I may just wanna ask her the last four just to confirm that it's her, uh, but otherwise I don't need to see her full social security number. So that's a great mechanism to be able to, to uh, protect their personally identifiable information. Uh, and the, the timeline over here, this is a, a, a timeline of all the activities and, and either emails that I've sent to, uh, to Alicia or received from her, phone calls. I can capture notes from phone calls. I can capture just raw notes. Uh, if she came into the office and was asking for services or we just had a conversation, you can capture the details of these notes. And you'll see that uh, these are being saved or updated by different team members. So this is a reverse chronological view uh, of all those uh, interactions or communications. And this is integrated to your Office 365 suite uh, to help you automatically update uh, some of that timeline information so that others, other staff members can see all the communication <clears throat> that's happened with this individual. So one, one really cool feature that we have in here is this notion of having a multiple address. Uh, this, is, this is a really great capability and why we've used selected Dynamics 365 uh, is because they provide this extendable uh, power platform that allows us to create cool features uh, to help manage the business rules around uh, their primary address, their mailing address, uh, and maintain that information for an individual and then share that across the, the multiple departments uh, to have access to that. So that's a really great capability. Now, one thing I wanna quickly point out is this notion of another security feature that we build in, uh, is this notion of having a client profile. The idea behind this is that this record is only visible by the family and child services team. So the, the main contact record, that would be visible or contain fields that would be visible across all the different departments. This contains very private information that might only be visible to the family and child services. So that might be 
<clears throat> you, for example, their eligibility for different programs, uh, their medical information, their profile of income details, their driver's license details, uh, what cases have actually been created uh, for those individuals. So we want to be able to uh, aggregate this data on a record, but very carefully manage who has access to that data uh, inside the system. So that's where this client profile comes in. And so as you can see, we very carefully defined the, the security uh, and, and manage that uh, across the entire platform. So uh, with one thing that I wanted to be able to show you uh, is this notion of having the cases. So again, we use these cases as a way uh, to track individual. Uh, so we'll pick on Paul. Uh, I can capture not only the, who is the applicant for this, uh, Paul Purple is the person that's, who's created this case, uh, and he's actually requesting family counseling. Uh, so we can see, okay, here are all the individuals involved with that, uh, and then I can capture all the case notes. Uh, so I can see, you know, over time, all the notes that I've captured or any assessments that I've created. Uh, if I'm, you know, giving, a, it might be a child, so I'm uh, assessing their ability to move to a different grade or their uh, mental capacity. You can capture all that data in one place on this case. Uh, so, and then, you know, if they're involved in a maybe a domestic situation, we can capture the incidents. And if there were children, were they placed uh, in a temporary or foster care? or with a family member, you can keep track of all that data uh, across the system. Plus, so that, that's how we can actually use the system to track a case uh, for an individual. Now, what I want to introduce to you is this notion of having a family plan. Uh, and that's, for example, a scenario where, let's say we had a domestic violence situation uh, and Susan Randall came in requesting counseling and assistance. Uh, so what ended up happening? Uh, is we create this family group and, and capture all the details and all the services that are being provided to this overall family. Uh, so you might be, have a case where Susan is getting counseling uh, for different, maybe she went into the clinic for you know a, a vet, uh, checkup and make sure she's okay. Uh, the, the, the abuser or the, the, uh, the incident was created uh, for the dad because he has alcohol issues and we wanna track the case or the services being provided there or for the individual children uh, and be able to show uh, the, the case notes or the placements or the, the activities that are being provided to the individual children. So there's some really great capabilities to say, here are all the services are, that are being provided to the overall family. And I can report on that in such a way, such as uh, I can capture all the time being provided by my team uh, to this individual to manage all the different uh, case notes, assessments, uh, meeting with them and and of, of all the counseling services uh, I want to track that data uh, and and be able to report on overall time spent with this individual so that's some really great capabilities uh, and how we can use that uh, one other aspect that I want to briefly touch on uh, is this notion of having uh, the also the, the repayment requests uh, so if you've got uh, services uh, you, you have that intake for those individuals and you've got somebody that's coming in and I need, you know, hardship, uh, might be a hardship request. Uh, you could create the service request, capture the details uh, of their situation. Uh, and again, if you if they're already a travel member, all this information, you just pick their name and all this information becomes available. Uh, and then you can look at they're looking at emergency assistance uh, and then you can establish their eligibility. So this is. For this program, they must be 18 years old. Uh, they can be any age group or they can be in any age group, but they must be a minimum age of 18 uh, and they must be a member uh, to, to um, uh, participate in this program. So then based on this, you can say, okay, here's the individual, here's their situation, either they are eligible or not, and then I can capture that uh, service request decision and from there, uh, either refer this individual for some uh, help because if they're having hardship and they're still having uh, housing issues, uh, let's get them some counseling or some uh, education so that uh, they can actually do better support their family. Uh, but oh, by the way, I'm going to create this payment request and submit that as a payment request so that we can get them as them the assistance that they need uh, and and make sure that we're they're taking care of them. 
So there's some really great capabilities within a solution like this to be able to monitor the, the, the services provided to the individual uh, and report on that very effectively. All right, so now what I wanna do is, is you could see some of the other aspects. I won't go through all of them, but in, within this family and child services application, uh, there's some really great capabilities here uh, to support support your team. So what I wanna do now is switch gears and show you a little bit about the portal. So now let's take a different view uh, and I'm gonna sign in. So I'm gonna simulate this scenario uh, of logging in as Alicia. And there's a mechanism to be able to uh, use a, oh, I mistyped her password. So you can see that there's a there's an integration to the security system uh, to provide an authentication. So you can either do that through their email uh, address and they can manage their own email login, or you can manage it through multiple uh, authentication models such as uh, Facebook or Google or Microsoft accounts uh, to be able to and use their, allow them to use their uh, login mechanism that they use online today uh, and, and authenticate themselves to the portal uh, using that same mechanism. So again, I'm simulating the scenario as Alicia, I'm logging in through the portal and then I can present this view of all the things that I can do. Uh, so I can go in here and, and as Alicia, I can use select an option to update my address, uh, update my household membership, uh, change my address, or submit an address change request, or submit an ID card request. So these are just examples uh, of, of uh, actions that I can perform on this, in the system, or and it's designed to be configurable to allow you to uh, submit your own uh, actions or add your actions that you want to be able to provide. So for example, under my profile, I can display a page uh, of the information that uh, I can view. So this is my personal details, my primary email address, or and then if I've submitted change requests for address, maybe I move around or as I've been going into the clinics uh, and my address has been submitted, I can have the office staff submit this change request on my behalf. And I can even go back here uh, and look at this old change request and, and say, oh, this is my new house. Uh, and was this approved or what, what is the status of this change? So I can, this is a mechanism for uh, you to be able to interact with your tribal members uh, and allow them to submit these requests uh, anytime, any place on any device. Or they can be on a mobile phone, um, they can be on a mobile phone or they could be on their, uh, on their uh, tablet or their uh, laptop uh, to be able to perform this. So in the here and again, we've got a scenario, we have this notion of having a household and you see that Alicia is a single mom, so she's the head of household. It shows her relationship uh, to all the household members. Uh, and then she's got three kids. So it shows that she's the biological mother uh, for these three kids. But her sister is actually living here, Tanya. Uh, so you can see that on one dashboard and then be able to say, I want to request a change. Either let's say one of the kids moved out or my, my sister moved out and she moved into a different location. I can update that membership uh, and, and remove her from that, uh, that household. So it's a great way for them to keep their data uh, current uh, while providing all sorts of different, uh, making sure that they're eligible for the services uh, that they are. And again, here is where I would come in to look at all the different service requests. So I can create one of these new service requests, uh, either being a counseling service request or it can be uh, child protective services or financial request. I need a Christmas card, I need that submitted and I can uh, pull that up uh, and view the details of that service request and say why I need this, uh, how much is, you know, and I can, the amount requested uh, can be defaulted in here or it can be, uh, uh, you can allow them to submit the, the amount that they've requested and then it can go into the system for uh, review and approval. And then of course, you're able to upload documents. Uh, that's one aspect of the portal so that when I am applying for a different type of program or membership or uh, an, an application for education assistance, you may require certain documents to be uploaded. So I can support that ability to dynamically pick up that list uh, of, uh, of documents and upload those scan documents and attach it to the record. And then that becomes a part of that service request would then, that would then be visible. 
uh, to the uh, to the staff uh, for review as evidence. Maybe it's our GPA record or whatever document that is. The last thing I want to quickly touch on is this notion of having wizards uh, for different types of applications. So we've created this as a as an example uh, of how we can say, okay, this individual Alicia is, is wants to get further her education, uh, but she needs some financial assistance. So we might use a, a wizard like this on the portal to collect the information that is needed. So this might be just verify your uh, information. If it isn't correct, go update it in the profile. If it is correct, we'll move on to the next step and you can see that there's a there's a, a, a progress bar that you can use to reference how far through the process you are. So I can come in here and say, I'm looking for adult education. Uh, I can say MSUM. Uh, my ID is this, I am already enrolled. Um, and I'm uh, actually looking for a uh, bachelor's of uh, uh, management. And I can say uh, needed for a new job. So now uh, I can submit this. I can now I can uh, review this information, uh, and I say, okay, I'm going to proof of registration. I can click that to say yes, I've uploaded that, and I can up upload those files here. I'm just simulating this in this environment, uh, and then what I can do is I can say yes, I certify that this information is correct, um, and I'm going to. Type my name, and when I click submit, now what it's doing is it's actually taking that data uh, and providing that. And I'm going to click on this view. Then now you can see that here's all my uh, applications that I've submitted. So I can come in here, and let's say, for example, that uh, I only had one of the documents, and I need to go in and update that, uh, update that uh, the document. So I can choose a file, and let me just pick one of these. Uh, images and you can see how that would look. Uh, let's see here. I want to pick this one right here. So now I can, you can see that I can upload that. And now that becomes a, a document that's associated to that application. Uh, and I can come back in here and I can see that document is that writes right there. So you can see that Alicia submitted it and it's attached to this application. Now, that's she submitted that application. We see that it's you know in the status of submitted. Uh, so I can switch gears and come back over here, uh, and I can click on that education application. And now here's that new application right here. So now I'm switching roles to be that staff member that's looking at this. I can pull up the information, see what was submitted uh, by her, and there's that document that was a, a, a attached uh, on the application. So this is a case where. You know, Alicia submitted this information overnight, let's say, uh, and provided this detail. And I, as a staff member, I can come into the core application, see that this new uh, application uh, was submitted. Uh, and maybe, for example, you know, all right, she, uh, she provided details, but I need to have more information. I can update the status of this application and say, nope, I'm going to send it back to her uh, because I need another new document. Uh, so that's a, a great scenario for you to be able to interact with the individual without requiring them to come into the office, and you don't necessarily have to do a phone call. And and there's workflows that happen behind the scenes to actually trigger uh, the applications and can notify and send an email to the individual uh, that more information might be needed or the status of this uh, this application has changed. So there's some great capabilities here to be able to manage uh, all the, the applications or service quests or whatever in the system uh, that you're, or the services you're providing to your tribal members. So that's a key element and how you can uh, interact and provide that data. Okay. So the last thing I wanted to show you is this notion of uh, now, we, the one new thing that's become available is this notion of having uh, integration within Microsoft Teams. Uh, this is a collaboration tool that Microsoft provides. You may be already using this today. Uh, it's because it's available within your Office 365 subscription. Uh, but now you've got a team that may be set up for your family and child services, uh, and they're attaching documents and so forth out here. 
Uh, but now with the integration uh, of uh, Dynamics 365 and Teams, we can actually add that uh, Power App uh, that you know that that uh, tribal staff application right into Teams. So now I can, if you use Teams every day to uh, text message your uh, teammates internally or collaborate on documents, uh, that kind of thing, you can now have the ability to say, rather than loading up uh, tribal platforms into a separate browser, I can actually, as long as I have access to this this channel within the Teams environment. I can pin that application directly uh, into my Teams environment and I can interact with all the data and there's that Alicia's record. Uh, so I can see all the different uh, information that's available to me through that application. And now I don't have to leave uh, this view. I can stay within one core application and, and be able to interact with both my staff uh, and generate, create emails and so forth right from here. So there's some really great and this is the power of using the integrated platform and pulling all these pieces together for uh, different business applications that you support so with that i'm that's pretty much the end of the the demonstration portion uh, so i will switch gears back to uh, my presentation so that's a little quick peek uh, there's there's much more functionality that we would need to dive in uh, if you want to spend more time you can certainly request uh, demonstration or contact one of the Arctic IT folks and we'd be more than happy to set up time with you uh, to walk through the different solutions that might be of interest for for your tribal tribal staff okay so with that I will hand it back to Joanne great thank you Brian for a great presentation we did have a few questions that came in um, the first one was how long does it take to get tribal platforms implemented so the great question, great question. So this is probably one of the most common questions that we get from tribal members uh, when they uh, are, are, are staff, uh, when they're looking at this platform. Uh, a lot of times the, the, the largest portion of an implementation cycle is what, how are you managing your membership data today? And how would we transform that data to get it into tribal platforms? Uh, so that is probably the biggest, uh, biggest uh, challenge uh, in any project is taking your data from where it is uh, in the either the, the solution that you have and can we migrate it directly or do we need to import that data into the system? So uh, if we signed up and, and uh, work through the, the, the agreements and so forth that need to be in place, uh, we can work with you to stand up the cloud hosted environments. So it's not uncommon and deploy the solutions and get your data migrated. It's not uncommon for these projects to be anywhere between six and nine months somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, but again, that's a, a very purposeful design to, you know, to to work with you, to set that timeline, you're engaged, train your staff, make sure that they understand how to use a system, s verify that the data has been transformed in, in, and accessible uh, and it's correct. And once they, they go through that, uh, that training and validation, then we go through a go live event and you become, you know, all these services become available to you internally so uh, to answer that question yes it would probably be in that six to nine month time period uh, and there's there's lots of interaction that happens in that period of time um, another question that came in is do you offer training to get us up and running on this software absolutely absolutely that's the training is is probably one of the most important elements of this uh, and one of the things that we do is we don't look at this as saying hey we're going to bring in the software drop it in your environment and away you go. No, we look at this as a, as a relationship and we wanna help you be successful. Uh, so one, one of the things that we do when we start a, a deployment is typically set up a, what we call an Arctic Ascend to support agreement with you. Uh, so not only is there training uh, for the individual staff or maybe multiple staff uh, across different departments on how to use a system, the, how the features work, so we go through that training initially prior to go live and then but then after uh, go live uh, through this Arctic Ascent support uh, uh, program, uh, you not only have a phone number that you can call. So if you've got an application owner uh, that needs have, runs into a problem, I got uh, data that's not quite right. I need to have uh, you know somebody look at this. We become that phone call that can support you to make sure your data is correct. 
but then also we provide periodic training uh, as new updates come along in the future or you get new staff members, uh, you, we try and record those uh, training sessions so you can make it available to your internal staff going forward. And then also uh, so that uh, they can have refresher sessions on maybe some feature that they aren't quite sure on, uh, you can have those refresher uh, training sessions. So yes, it's intended to be a collaborative effort and that's why we highly recommend that Arctic Ascent support uh, agreement and, and process so that we can continue to engage with you and support you uh, now and into the future. Hey, okay, another question. Uh, I may have missed this, but if we are already using other databases, the can the information be migrated? Absolutely, absolutely. So that's one of the powers of the platform. Uh, we use multiple different mechanisms to, if you've got, a let's say, an access database or a spreadsheet or you're using another product, and that has a, a SQL database. Uh, we've got a suite of tools uh, at our disposal that we use to either transform and migrate that data from the existing system uh, that you use today into the, uh, the tribal platform system, or uh, we can use uh, different tools, uh, data integration tools and the Power Platform integration uh, to take and reach into that source database uh, and then transform, read, clean up the data, make sure it's correct, and then import into the tribal platform system. So yes, absolutely, that's one of the strengths of the system is for us to be able to support those my data migration uh, to bring it from on-premise systems up into the cloud and then apply that security to that data. Okay, great. great. Question. Uh, another question, is it a requirement to have a certain Microsoft license for tribal platforms? Example, E1 versus E3. Yep, so yes, great question. So. Yes, uh, there's there's some licensing uh, that is recommended, and that's specifically around Office 365 or Microsoft 365. Those are used for your email or for your uh, Office 365 documents and that kind of thing. Those aren't necessarily required. What we require is what's called the Dynamics 365, uh, and typically we recommend like a customer service enterprise, uh, and that license is typically used for your uh, your uh, app business application owners or your IT folks. So we typically need a, a couple seats of the ent that enterprise seat, uh, but then all the other folks uh, that use the, the power apps, uh, those individuals can then use what's either called a, a power apps per application or a power apps per user seat. Uh, and those are a cheaper, uh, cheaper uh, license uh, that would give you access to the tribal platform system using the Dynamics 365 subscription uh, that is set up in your environment. So, but that's the beauty of it is that the Dynamics 365 security and so forth is all integrated to your, maybe you have an existing uh, Office 365 subscription. So you have that environment already configured. This is just adding to that existing environment that your IT team already manages. So we, that's why it, there's, there's some really great benefits in, in working with the Microsoft stack because as you continue to add more people or, or people leave and you need to reduce your licenses, it's really easy to adjust those license quantities and types uh, based on your specific needs. Great question. Excellent. Uh, no other questions right now. Um... All right, well, thank you. Thank okay. you folks for uh, uh, listening and, and participating in this. Uh, demonstration. I really appreciate you taking your time out of your day uh, to join and learn a little bit more about travel platforms. So with that, uh, I'll uh, turn it over to Joanne to, be, to wrap us up. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. Yes, there was one more question that came in. And Annette, oh, sure. is there a recording of this? Absolutely. Uh, once the recording is finished, um, which should be shortly, we can forward that to you. Um, and, in, and if you have any questions, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us um, via that uh, email. Yep. So I want to thank everybody for joining us and um, have a wonderful day. Thank you for a great presentation. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arctic IT thank team, you. and thank you to our tribal customers. We do appreciate you and uh, look forward to the time we can get together again in person once the pandemic is over. And uh, I'm hearing great things about vaccinations with tribal 
uh, entities, especially like in my state, a lot of the tribes have vaccinated their entire tribal population. So keep up the good work, stay safe out there and thank you everybody. Have a good day. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you.